Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar for today on driving online conversions with Google's new remarketing solution. My name is Beatriz and I'm Product Solution Specialist for Southeast Asia and I'm joined by Akansha, who is Product Solution Specialist for India and we will be your host for today. Before we start, some housekeeping items. Can see? Please enable pop-ups. If you can hear us, please refresh your browser. If you have any questions, please keep posting them to the Q&A window, but we will answer only answer them at the end in the Q&A time. How did we do? Please fill the survey at the end before our Q&A time if you don't see the pop-up, please enable pop-ups. Want to hear it again? A link will be coming to your inbox within the next week. And let's start. Google makes display advertising work for you. This is the mission of our Google Display Network. Through the Google Display Network, we help you to win moments that matter, enable better decisions, and constantly innovate. Let's see how we can do this with remarketing. This is the agenda for today. I will be talking about the value of remarketing, remarketing on the Google Display Network, Akansa will walk you, walk you through the new remarketing features, the new remarketing tags, remarketing with Google Analytics, and AdWords remarketing list for search ads. I will then walk you through additional audience solutions, the, re, the recap, and then the Q&A time. Let's start by the value of remarketing. 96% of people who visit a website live without completing the actions marketeers want them to take. This action can be a sign up, it can be a booking, it can be a purchase. And 70% of people abandon their shopping cart without completing a purchase. This means that from all the people that come to your website, only 30% will complete a purchase. Remarketing helps you to re-engage with people that have already shown interest in your product or in your service. And it will obviously help you to reduce media wastage. So how do you improve the ROI of all your online campaigns? You are probably already investing in search, in display advertising, in social media. You are probably receiving organic uh, uh, visits. But uh, looking at the stats that we, just, we have just seen, 70% of the people will leave uh, the shopping cart without completing a purchase. Without remarketing, your website is like a leaky bucket. Once that you are driving traffic to your website, Remarketing will help you to win your customers back and close the sale or make them finish the action that you want them to do. Let's talk about remarketing on the Google Display Network. With remarketing on the Google Display Network, you can reach more users. In fact, you can reach 84% of your remarketing list within a month. You can reach them on about 10 to 18 or even more days out of the month. And you can reach them on various pages. As they visit 20 or more pages across 5 to 10 sites. This is inventory that you can tap into through remarketing. Let's see now some, uh, why remarketing works for brand marketers, for search marketers, and for performance marketers 
followed by a few popular uh, strategies, a case study, and then Akansha will take you into more advanced stuff. Why remarketing is great from, for brand marketers? It helps you to drive up brand awareness with tailored ads, and it helps you to continue the conversation with your strongest prospects. Let's say that, for example, you are a FMCG client, and you are uh, having a masthead on YouTube. You are having this massive uh, exposure, brand awareness, this massive engagement, but what are you doing to follow up? You can use remarketing to remarket the users that saw or engaged with the masthead and remarket them in the GDN with your product. If you are an auto client and you are having, for example, a true viewing stream campaign in YouTube, you can remarket viewers with a test drive. This is the way to use remarketing to follow up and continue the conversation. Why remarketing is great for search marketers? You are driving a lot of traffic through search. You are attracting all these people that are in a, a comparison mode. Through remarketing, you can re-engage with someone that has already so interest in your product. You can remarket them and push them down the funnel. And why remarketing is great for direct response? I think this is very obvious. Remarketing is great for direct response because basically it helps you to convert consumers who abandon their shopping carts. You can drive more conversions having the same performance you get from search. Let's see now some popular strategies. The most popular strategy is our first strategy, reconnect with your consumer. This first strategy is basically a remarketing people that drop from your shopping cart. Let's say that you are a travel client, a travel advertiser, and you are advertising hotels in Bali. And someone dropped from your shopping cart, you probably want to remarket this person and make them finish the booking. You can, for example, remarket them in the GDN and offer them a 50% discount when they book a hotel in Bali. The second strategy is what we call negative remarketing. It's a way to reach new customers. The way this works is that you can exclude your remarketing list from your contextual or your audience campaign in the, in the GDN. This way you will be reaching only people that have never visited your website. And for example, you can offer them a $20 voucher because they are new customers and you want to attract them. This is an amazing acquisition tool. The third strategy is to re-engage across YouTube with video remarketing. You are having a masthead or you are running a true view campaign, and you can re-engage with people that saw your masthead, interacted with your masthead, or view your uh, true view campaigns, and follow up with uh, call to action messages to drive sales. So you are having amazing exposure and engagement and with remarketing, you can drive sales. You can add the performance side of the campaign. And let's see a successful story of using remarketing. Big Cactus is an online auction business. And by using remarketing, they saw a decrease in CPA of 22%. Their goal was to reach potential customers on relevant pages across the web and re-engage with registered users who had not made a purchase. 
This cast to saw a cost per acquisition as CPA for the remarketing campaign that was 22% less than the average CPA. Let's see how you can have the same success by using the new remarketing features. I will give the floor now to Akansha, who is going to walk you through these new remarketing features. Thank you so much, Beatrice. Hi, everyone. We'll be talking through the remarketing features in detail now. Uh, let's look at the new remarketing tag. The new remarketing tag is very simple to implement. Uh, you can use advanced list rules to create assets. Many of you are already running remarketing, but are you using the original tag? It's great. It works really well. But you do know that you have to create multiple pixels and tags for each and every page that you want to tag. And we've had some clients in the past complain that they cannot have more and more pixels implemented on their site. This is where the new remarketing tag comes into the picture. You can now have one tag implemented across the whole site, and you can create advanced list rules of it. You can start off by creating a different list for each and every page of your site. Uh, you can place the code either on the home page, the t-shirt page, which is the product page. You can place it on the cart page, the payment page, or the confirmation page, depending on the kind of users that you are wanting to remarket to. A best practice that we always recommend is to have the tag implemented on all the pages of your website. However, you can always choose to not implement the code on certain pages that you do not want to track. Here on this example, you can see that we've, we've uh, tagged the home page, the t-shirt page, the shopping cart page, the payment page, and the confirmation page. Let's move on to the creation of remarketing list. Using the new remarketing tag, you can create remarketing lists using the site's URLs. In the example mentioned here, you can target the, the page where you're advertising for t-shirts. Hence, you can retarget to all the users who have been to your t-shirt page but not converted. Now let's move on to seeing how this code helps you segment your users better. You can segment your customers to drive better performance from your campaigns. The new remarketing tag helps you break down your audience into subgroups. Let's take an example of users uh, for a retail website who have recently uh, seen a new collection of your shoes, uh, who have probably seen a, a particular shoe page but haven't checked out, and people who have been to the sale page but haven't made a purchase. You can try different segmentation uh, methods to create different lists, and also segmenting users this way will help you tailor your ads better to reach out to them. You can also optimize your bids to make sure that you are bidding for the right audience, the one that is the most valuable to you, and you can decide on the bids better that way. Let's look at this in, in, with respect to your search campaigns and how this might fit into the purchase funnel. You can remarket to your visitors based on their intent. You can reach out to somebody who is searching for your product on the home page, somebody who is viewing a particular product, somebody who's already seen through a lot of products, added them to the cart, somebody who is on the payment page, and someone who's already made a purchase who's on the confirmation page. As you go through the purchase cycle, 
the further you in, the further you go ahead with the cycle, the more value you have for that particular customer. Now, certain remarketing are very very similar because they can catch users based on their intent, and you can use bid and ad and uh, ad strategies to reach out to users again. Now, you would obviously have more and more people who have been to your homepage list rather than the ones who've been to your checkout page but haven't made the purchase. Now, let's look at the value that you have of these users. When we think about the value of a customer, uh, those who've added products to their shopping cart already are more likely to complete a transaction. This is similar to somebody who's searching for your brand plus, that, plus for the product that is already on your website. This ties back to the relevancy factor on search, which is when you, you give the, the, the product or the service that the user is looking for. Now let's see a couple of examples that would help you understand how to determine your strategy and how to set up a campaign using bid strategy. Let's say you are uh, an, a retail site and you have a loyalty program. You can reach frequent shoppers by segmenting based on how many times a user has been to your site. And for those people, you would want to bid more. Also, you can bid on people or remarket to users based on how much of uh, how much worth of merchandise do they have in their shopping cart. Let's again take the example of a retail uh, advertiser. You would want to reach out to somebody who has added 500 worth of products and then show the ad again to make sure they make the purchase. Remarketing to users who are on the confirmation page is another strategy that you could use. For instance, uh, you know of a, as soon as a person makes a purchase, they see the confirmation page. Those are valuable customers to you because they believe in your product and they've completed a purchase. It would be a good idea for you to reach out to them with promotional coupons or offers to make sure that they come back to your site and make another purchase. Now let's look at how you can use automated bidding with Conversion Optimizer along with your remarketing list. Now Conversion Optimizer has primarily been used to optimize based on site, but remarketing is all about reaching out to users who haven't completed a, con a conversion. Conversion Optimizer now considers how recently somebody left your site as a major factor in determining how much to bid for that particular user. Now let's talk about why is recency that important. We've typically seen for campaigns that use remarketing along with conversion optimizer, there's a 14% increase in conversion and an 8% reduction in the CPA. The sooner you reach out to a user who's seen your ad, your average CPA for that user tends to be lesser, and it con and it continues to grow to go up, going by the number of days since the last time the user visited your site. The conversion optimizer optimizes bids based on how recently the user has visited your site, and the results so far have been excellent. Now let's recap the five benefits of using the new remarketing tag. Number one is that you can create sophisticated remarketing lists. You can be more and more granular with the kind of audience that you want to reach out to. Number two is that you can have a single tag implemented across your whole site. You do, you do not need to create a specific tag for each of the pages that you want to tag. And you can reach more people, thereby expanding your target audience. Also, you can use Conversion Optimizer to optimize for conversions that are most likely to convert for you.
Now let's talk about remarketing with Google Analytics. With remarketing with Google Analytics, you can actually tap into the data that Google Analytics provides, and you can derive insights from that data to reach out to customers who've shown an interest in your product. You can show them highly targeted ads and make sure that they respond to your ad by making a conversion. You can leverage over 100 rich dimensions and metrics to build remarketing lists. Another benefit of using remarketing with Google Analytics is that it's very simple for you to edit and create lists without having much difficulty, and you can connect with more and more customers than ever before. Let's look at some of the examples how you can use Google Analytics to remarket to your customers. You can help an undecided shopper to, create, to make a purchase. The way you can do this is by building a list of visitors who come to your site multiple times, view specific pages of product, and then you can show relevant ads around those products across the whole of Google Display Network. Another good use case is to have to target, to have to target customers in a particular location. You can Choose to show special promotions, offers, coupons based on location of users that you want to reach out to. Also, you can try and create lists to bring back users who did not complete a purchase. You can create lists of users who put items in their basket, their shopping cart, but haven't checked out. And last but not the least, you can earn loyalty of your customers by showing them ads with promotion code coupons so that they make additional purchases. Now let's look at an example where you should bid higher for visitors who spend more time on your site. Now the number of minutes or the time spent on your site is a direct indicator of the interest that the user has in your product. This is a good way to determine how much should you bid on a, bid for a particular uh, remarketing list. The longer the person, the user is on your site, the more, the higher should be your bid. This ties back to the recency uh, aspect of search. When you want to reach out to somebody who's just seen your uh, product but hasn't converted. Now let's look at a comparison of the new remarketing tag and remarketing with Google Analytics and see what use cases suit where and what are the unique capabilities offered by both of them. With the new remarketing tag, you can create lists based on dynamic values using custom parameters. And you can also, you can also uh, optimize search ads based on remarketing lists, which is another topic that I'll be covering in the next couple of slides. With remarketing with Google Analytics, you can, uni you can use the unique segmentation capabilities of Google Analytics, such as the bounce rate, time spent on site, uh, the frequency of your users, location, and so on, to create remarketing lists. And you can also view performance reporting on audience segments before time to inform your decisions on who to target. It is, a, it is advisable to create uh, tailored ads and use specific bids to target users on the marketing list when they are searching. Let's look at the four benefits of remarketing with Google Analytics. Apart from everything that the new remarketing tag does, you can also reach out to users based on their recency and frequency the amount of time that they have spent on site, the sequence in which they have navigated your website, and the value that that, that that user can drive for you.
Let's look at AdWords remarketing list for search ads now. Now imagine how awesome would it be to bring back users a customized experience on search. Let's say I'm searching for shoes on google.com. I see your website and I go there, but I do not complete the purchase. It would be a great idea to reach out to users like me by optimizing your creatives and bids to make sure that I see your ad again on Google search and then convert. This is where remarketing list for search ads comes into the picture. You can create remarketing lists based on a user's past action on your website. Now let's look at scenarios where you can use remarketing lists for search ads. You can convert new customers, you can cross-sell upsell existing customers, and you can enhance online conversions. The way you can convert new customers is by optimizing your search bits and your ad copies to reach out to customers who have seen products on your site, who have been to your site but haven't converted. You can cross-sell upsell to existing customers by customizing offers to what they've already seen on your site. Let's say a, a shoe shopper has seen a particular shoe on your site, but did not convert probably because it was beyond his price range or it's, it, he was probably waiting for an offer to come on the same product. You can actually create tailored ads to reach out to those kind of users by putting in a new price point or an offer or promotion to make sure that the purchase is done. And then you can enhance online conversions by excluding customers who have already converted or are not likely to convert. This particular data is is currently in the beta mode for Japan, Australia, India, Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and New Zealand. And you should reach out to your account management teams to make sure that you are whitelisted for this data. Now let's look at the five benefits of using remarketing lists for search ads. You can expand your reach. You can add in a layer of targeting for search beyond all the targeting controls that you already have for uh, search ads, you can increase CTR and decrease your CPA. You can leverage the sophisticated data that you have already from the Google Display Network and then combine it with search. And you can recapture consumer interest on Google search as well. Now I'm going to hand it over to Beatrice to cover the rest of the topic. So now I'm going to walk you through some exciting products that we recently launched. So we will start with similar audiences. Similar audiences allows you to find people with similar browsing history as the users you, that you have in your remarketing list. In the case of the advertisers that we have in the slide, these advertisers saw 80% increase in conversions at a profitable CPA. With similar audiences, you can find 30% more new customers. New users click through 71% as often as remarketing list users. And on average, you will get three times the clicks and conversions compared to your remarketing campaign. Some comments about similar audiences, it happens automatically, so the system will automatically populate the similar users list, so we cannot force it. And also, the more specific your remarketing list, the easier to find a similar audience list. 
because it will be easier to identify the browsing history of the users in that list. Another exciting launch is demographics. At the moment, it's available in India, Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand. But please reach your account manager for more information in case that you want to target other countries outside of APAC. With demographics, you can target age and gender. How do we determine demographics? We determine demographics with inferred data, we declare data, and publisher data. And you will be wondering, what's inferred data? Inferred data means that we anonymously look at the type of pages that you have visited or the content that you have viewed. In fact, you can see your own interest or your own demographic profile at google.com slash ads slash preferences. One success story I would like to mention is Blue Nile. Blue Nile is a diamond retailer, and by using demographics, achieve a CTR of over 1% in the Google Display Network. For any of you using GDN, you know this is an amazing CTR. And let's recap before jumping into the Q&A time. Maximize your ROI with a new remarketing tag. Create advanced remarketing strategies with remarketing with Google Analytics. Deliver a customized experience on Google.com to pass visitors with a remarketing list for search ads. Prospect new customers with similar audiences and demographics. Now we will jump into the Q&A time. You will see a pop-up in your screen asking you to fill the survey. Please fill us as this helps us to improve a lot. If you don't see the pop-up, please enable pop-ups in your browser. And without waiting too much, let's jump into the questions. You can keep following the survey, please, so let's not stop that. So for example, we received one question about CPCs. Do my CPCs increase when I start remarketing? So remarketing CPCs are usually higher than the rest of display. That's the first thing I want to say, but the CPA, the cost per conversion, is usually lower. Also, I would advise you to use conversion optimizer because as Akansa said, conversion optimizer optimizes bids based on how recently the user visited the site. We received another question about how to pick optimal list size. I guess this is more about list duration. I don't think that this, it means list size. So basically, um, the list duration will be based on the conversion cycle of your product. So you are the one that knows the best the duration of your, of your remarketing list. For example, for cars, it will be longer than for a flight. You can also plug in conversion optimizer because it will automatically consider this. As I mentioned in the previous question, conversion optimizer will optimize your piece based on how recently the user visited the site.
We also got another question about the importance of creatives in remarketing. Obviously, the creatives in remarketing are key. First thing that I would say is use a clear call to action. This is someone that has been to your web website. This is someone that has shown interest already. So it's probably decided. decided. If you have the chance to offer an incentive, offer an incentive to make, them, make customers come back. If you cannot offer the incentive, at least show a very clear call to action. If you are remarketing from the masthead, for example, use uh, creatives that continue the story, that keep the conversation. Remember to refresh them regularly. And remember also to use a uh, frequency capping so you don't expose the users too much to the same creative. And then also remember to use text, text ads. It will help you first in case that you cannot refresh your display creative too often. And second, it will help you to, re to basically reach that part of inventory that is text only. And also we've seen very good performance from text ads. Also, I'm seeing a lot of questions around how to implement remarketing for remarketing with GA and with the, the new remarketing tag. Uh, there are a couple of health center articles available, and we'll try and distribute them through a follow-up. But I would highly recommend for you to reach out to your account teams to get a better download of how to implement this for your campaigns ASAP. So also we got another question about specific strategies for B2B. So for B2B basically, it will depend first on the type of the customer, but then what I will advise is to create the strategies based on, based on the type of the page, as we have uh, said uh, during the, the presentation and also segment by product. This is the initial approach that you can have. Another question that we got is what type of information should I capture for someone who drop off a sales process? You have to collect the product ID of the product category so you can remarket him with a targeted ad. Another good question is that how would you get to know on what part of your website is the tag already been placed? I, ideally, your webmaster team should be aware of this, but there are a couple of Chrome extensions that we could share that will help you understand what pages have already been tagged. Then there's another good question around how should you remarket to users who are coming to your website via organic search? You can get this information through Google Analytics. And if you see that there are a lot of search terms that are making people visit your site, it is a good idea for, that, for you to add those terms as keywords and then use remarketing to reach out to those users who haven't com completed the conversion. Another question that we receive is when, when will demographics be available for countries where it hasn't been launched? So basically, to, to launch demographics, we need to make sure that the inferred information is right. So usually, we partner with publishers in the market to make sure that our information is accurate. That's why we haven't launched it. And actually, this is related to another question that we have received. And it says, is it possible to split between age, gender, against unknown for high CTR? What does this mean? This means that usually we categorize users, age, uh, their age or their gender, male, female, and we have a group called unknown. So that group is the group that we haven't been able to infer the age or the gender. And actually, this is an advice practice. You should split the different genders and have a specific creative for male and for female, and you should have another one for unknown so you can basically uh, target both uh, male and female. 
We also and got another. Sorry, I can't show. Please, go ahead, go ahead. So, how to exclude a remarketing list? I'm sure that you are very familiar with excluding keywords. So the same way you exclude keywords or you exclude placements, you can exclude a remarketing list. So it's another exclusion. There's nothing different. It's just that you are excluding a remarketing list. Another question is that if you're trying to target visitors based on intent, if you have to create separate remarketing codes and then implement on the site, with a new remarketing code, you just have a single code that needs to be implemented across the site, and then you can use custom parameters and try and target different uh, URLs of your website by trying to target the specific URL that you are, you are trying to reach out to. Another question that we've got is uh, how are the CPCs for similar audiences? Regarding CPCs, we don't see a difference with other uh, display campaigns, but we see that the CPA, the cost per conversion, will be between the CPA of the remarketing campaign and the, CT the CPA of the keyword contextual campaign. Another question is around how to identify customers who need to be excluded from the remarketing list. This is the negative remarketing that I just talked about. You can remove people or visitors from your list who already made a conversion. You would ideally have this information if you are tracking the checkout page. The reason why you would want to do this is that you wouldn't want to remarket it to the same user who's already completed the transaction. And it would make more sense for you to reach out to people who haven't, haven't converted for you. So we are constantly getting two questions. They are repeated quite a lot of times. How do I, I enable Google Analytics remarketing? So things to remember, amend the code. So that's the first thing, change the code. If you don't change a small piece of code, you won't see it. And second thing, very important, click on the admin tab in Google Analytics to see remarketing list tabs. So amend code, click on the admin tab. Also, uh, like I, re I re answered it already, but as it seems we keep uh, getting the question of how to exclude a remarketing list. Uh, and I have my own account in front. And when you go to the display network, under any, any other tab, display keywords, placement, topics, interest, at the bottom, you will have the exclusions. You can click on the plus. And you will be able to exclude display keywords, placement, topics, interest, and remarketing. That's where you have to click. So in the display tab, in any campaign, you scroll down, you have exclusions. You go to interest and remarketing tab, and you add the remarketing list you want to exclude. We also have a question, uh, remarketing strategies uh, for education vertical. Education vertical is uh, usually quite straightforward because it will be universities and courses. So first, if you create awareness through YouTube, you can basically follow up and re-engage with the consumers in the GDN, but also if it's for a uh, for enrolling into the courses or the university is the, the abandoned shopping cart strategy. 
So if someone visits the sign up page or they get enrolled or they get more information, at least without completing the action, you can remarket them in the Google Display Network. And for example, invite, I invite them an open door day. We have another question about how to enable or disable similar users. Basically, the way that similar users work is that if we, see, if we identify a similar user list, so a remarketing list that we can create a similar user list, we will create it automatically in the same box where you see the remarketing list or in the library, but that wouldn't be active. So in order to make it active, you will have to create a campaign and apply the new remarketing list, the similar audience list. Because if not, it won't be working. It's just a list that you will be able to see there in your library. You will be able to see the number of users in the list, but it won't be working. So you have to apply the targeting to a campaign. You have to apply the similar audience list to the campaign. There is a question on remarketing for search ads around whether it is advisable to create different lists for mobile and desktop, whether you should separate the two. I would say it would be a good idea for you to create separate campaigns and then separate lists for the two, simply because you'll have better control over how much CPCs you are spending, what kind of ads would you want to uh, create. The more tailored they are according to the device and to the user's intent, and probably the products or the features that they were interested in looking at, the more likely is your chance of having that consumer to convert on your website. We also got a question about how to remarket to dissatisfied customers. So I would say that first, this shouldn't be only a remarketing strategy because uh, probably you would want to uh, engage with them in social platforms or something like that. But basically, if you want to remarket them, I would say you can um, offer them a discount so they can try your service or your product again. Or another way that you could do is that you could decide to remarket them with a true view in a stream ad, for example, in YouTube. So you can imagine, like, uh, use this video apologizing. I mean, I think remarketing uh, allows you to be very creative. I know that we all get lost in tags and cookies, but uh, as I mentioned, you could also like create this video apologizing and remark it to them. There is another question on reaching new users through remarketing, and what is the optimum weightage between remarketing and non-remarketing uh, campaigns? There is no particular weightage that I would be able to uh, give you, but you should look at remarketing campaigns um, as a way of supplementing your uh, non-remarketing campaigns. You're basically trying to reach out to users who you've already shown your ad through your non-remarketing campaigns, and then you are trying to remarket to, to the same users in order to make them to convert on your site. So I would say give equal importance to both. Another question that we've got is how does uh, remarketing work for secure sites with the new remarketing tag? So basically our system will automatically detect if it's a secure site or not. There are a couple of questions around whether uh, Advertisers are authorized to use Google products on the website and whether it is really required to use Conversion Optimizer or not. I would say we highly recommend you to uh, implement Google uh, products such as conversion tracking, remarketing tags, Google Analytics tags on your website. Uh, these are decisions that are to be taken by advertisers. If you do not have any issues in implementing tags on your site, we more than highly recommend you to do so. And um, it is a best practice to use Conversion Optimizer along with remarketing because uh, it has uh, driven great results for us. Also, um, it would be 
useful for advertisers to uh, pay for conversions that are most likely to happen. As I uh, previously mentioned, the conversion optimizer takes into uh, account the relevancy factor. So reaching out to users who have recently seen your ad would make them convert more if you were to show your ad to them again. So another question we got is if we can use both Google Analytics remarketing and the new remarketing tag, and the answer is yes. As Akansa mentioned during the presentation, uh, both have like unique features, and you can decide to use uh, either of them or both at the same time. So we keep uh, getting the question about when demographics will be launched in, uh, in, Mal in Malay no, Malaysia. Malaysia Malaysia is actually launched. It's launched in Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand in Southeast Asia, and it's launched in India too. So as I mentioned, just contact your account manager in case that you want to make sure that demographics is launched in your country or not. Also, we keep the, getting the question about the remarketing exclusion. Uh, I think that people are asking if uh, we can exclude a page. So basically, it depends on the remarketing list you have defined. If you have created a remarketing list that is, uh, is basically collecting users that uh, visited the page about T-shirts, obviously you will be able to exclude a specific page because you have created a remarketing list targeting that page. If you are collecting all the users of your website, then because of the way that you have defined remarketing, you won't be able to exclude users that have visited a specific page. I see a couple of questions around whether it is, uh, whether you can remarket to users who've seen your videos, and whether you can create a list of, a list of users who have viewed the YouTube video ads. Yes, it is possible in cases uh, where you're running either ads, in-stream ads on uh, YouTube or if you're running masters, please reach out to your account teams to have them implemented. Also, there are some questions around whether this deck will be shared. Yes, we will be sharing this deck later and you should have more information in your inboxes in a week or two. Also, we are receiving the question if uh, you have to modify the remarketing tag. So basically, modifying the remarketing tag is for Google Analytics. In Google Analytics, if you have the code, you will have to change a small piece in all your pages in order to, to see a remarketing list. For the new remarketing tag, if you don't have any tag, obviously you just have to implement it in your entire site. If you have the old remarketing tag, and you have tagged uh, most of your website, you don't need to change it either. If you have just tagged a small part of your website, then we advise you to generate a new tag and retag your site. Same tag in all pages. So I think this is the end of our session. We've got a lot of questions. Uh, thank you for being such an engaged audience. I'm looking forward to, see you, to seeing you again in other webinars. Thank you and have a good afternoon. Thank you, everyone.